the Sustainable Knowledge Corridor. It links the Capital Region of Connecticut and the Pioneer Valley Region of Massachusetts. This region is also linked by shared resources, from the Connecticut River, New England's longest river, to the Interstate 91 Corridor, the major north-south artery in New England, to a network of over 29 colleges and universities, an innovative business community, and a well-educated and skilled workforce. The region enjoys rich natural and cultural resources that enhance the quality of life. Its favorable geographic location ensures it is well connected to U.S. and world markets. This is a plan for the Knowledge Corridor's future. It's a plan that spans two states, but one region. It is a plan that we believe offers a creative approach to make the corridor even better. The Knowledge Corridor is a region that is connected. It's competitive and vibrant. It's also green. This is a shared vision for our future, one that covers our region's jobs, housing and medical care, schools and its transportation. With these strategies, we can make our region even more connected, more competitive, vibrant and greener. It's a shared vision for a sustainable future. A sustainable region must also be an equitable region with equal opportunity to access jobs, housing and resources. This is a key theme of our plan and we have strived to include people who are often left out of the planning process. This region is one of the most segregated in the country and I think one of the reasons for that is that we're complacent things that we must do is really recognize that there's an inequitable distribution of resources in this region. It doesn't matter why, it doesn't matter how we got here. We have to address it or else we're going to continue to end up in a situation where we have a small number of people who are successful on every level and a large number of people who are not successful on, by several different measures. A connected knowledge corridor has increased transportation and communication choices for all. It has access to passenger rail and bus rapid transit services that link our region to New York and Boston. A connected knowledge corridor has a network of bicycle and pedestrian paths, bike lanes and sidewalks. It has complete streets that provide safe and convenient access for everyone, drivers as well as bicyclists and those on foot. All these things reduce dependency on automobile use, resulting in energy savings and reduction in air pollution. A connected knowledge corridor also has high-speed internet access. This is being offered through public and private partnerships, like Mass Broadband 123 and Connecticut's Nutmeg Network. This helps provide broadband internet access to underserved communities. A connected knowledge corridor can also revitalize communities when transit investment and neighborhood revitalization are linked. But more can and should be done. When you look at transportation connections, uh, the, the, the buzzword is multimodal. So you don't just look at one thing, you look at pedestrian, cars, buses, trains. And so the issue is how do we fix a system where all those work together. So as of 2015, we're going to have a very large rapid transit system opening. 2016, we will have almost 20 trains a day going to New Haven and New York City. And then we're working on a regional bike share program and we're working on better pedestrian connections. Rail connections can be improved, including a bi-state funding strategy to ensure that the New Haven, Hartford, Springfield and the Vermonter rail projects already underway are completed. The bus rapid transit system started with CT Fast Track must be expanded to better link the business and educational centers of the Knowledge Corridor. We must adopt a complete streets ethic, fully incorporating bicycle and pedestrian traffic into transportation projects. We must also build a linked network of bicycle and pedestrian routes and amenities for these greener forms of transportation to allow access to urban centers and employment destinations. Thompsonville, a low to middle income neighborhood in Enfield, will be home to a new multimodal transportation center that will link bus service to the region's new commuter rail service. 
This will enhance Thompsonville as a place where people will want to live, work, and play. It's the largest urban neighborhood north of Hartford, and it really already has a lot of unique character. Multi-family housing, we hope to have even more mixed use, so that would be retail and services on bottom floors and residential above, a real village feel, and certainly with the added transit, we would have people coming and going from the transit station along the river walk, which will have hike and bike trails right along the Connecticut River, and a lot of people shopping and just having cafes and, and that kind of thing. That's what we're really excited about in terms of the village, compact, walkable, authentic downtown feel. Holyoke's Depot Square area will be revitalized with the construction of a new rail platform and the adoption of a transit-oriented development district. A new rail station in downtown Holyoke is really the opportunity to open a new gateway into and out of the city. So it provides a lot of mobility for our residents to connect with other jobs and entertainment options uh, outside of the valley and down south to New York City. Uh, but it also allows for people from outside the city to connect to the things that we can offer here. According to the report, Making it happen, opportunities for transit-oriented development in the Knowledge Corridor, the next 30 years will see the rising demand for housing near new forms of transit as more walkable and sustainable lifestyles become popular. Existing job sectors are growing, with universities, colleges, and hospitals leading that growth. A competitive Knowledge Corridor has improved job training and talent development programs to ensure a skilled workforce for those industries already here and those to come. It has increased educational opportunities, as well as job and economic opportunities for low-income and minority residents. It has more great neighborhoods in and around the urban cores, with means to attract and retain college graduates and young workers. Why is it important that we attract millennials? Because we're going to need them. They have $200 million of buying power today. By 2025, which is less than 10 years away, the income of millennials will exceed both Generation Wires and Baby Boomers combined. So it's important that we attract and retain the next large wave of uh, people that are going to sustain our economy. It has new transit-oriented development, offering a mix of housing types and employers, all supported by anchor institutions. So the challenge we have as a company and that the region will have is as we continue to grow, as we have been at a very hot, fast rate, it's hard to keep up from a hiring standpoint. So whereas some clients and some companies are struggling to find work, we actually struggle to find talent to do the work and in fact end up turning away work that we'd like to be able to do but just don't have enough talent to be able to put behind it. A training system will match available talent with jobs. We must ensure this is available to people of all backgrounds. We must do more to make our corridor competitive. The recently completed Knowledge Corridor Talent and Workforce Strategy provides a roadmap for this to improve today's workforce and train tomorrow's. To do this, we need to work together on initiatives, on everything from early childhood education all the way up to colleges and workforce training. We must match talent to jobs and create the workforce pipeline of tomorrow. States, anchor institutions, and the private sector must aggressively invest in development near transit corridors and rail stations. We must ramp up Bradley International Airport, a Western New England airport of choice. A vibrant knowledge corridor has communities and neighborhoods where people want to live, work, and play. There are more transportation choices and a broader range of equitable and affordable housing for people of all ages, incomes, races, and ethnicity. There's improved economic competitiveness for workers and businesses and investment to support existing communities to make them more livable. There are also increased opportunities for exercise and enjoying the outdoors. A vibrant knowledge corridor acknowledges the unique communities and neighborhoods of the corridor enhancing how those communities are linked together to create one region, the Knowledge Corridor. The Knowledge Corridor must be encouraged to be as vibrant as it can be through government action and community work. 
Zoning incentives must be focused to encourage compact mixed-use and mixed-income village centers and downtowns. Public streets, buildings, and infrastructure must be designed with placemaking in mind. Main street programs and community organizations all have a hand in this. One such project that's already in the works is the Springfield Court Square project. The project will provide engineering and architectural plans for the renovation and substantial rehabilitation of the 120,000 square foot historic Court Square building as a mixed use center. It will transform the Court Square building into a mixed use center with offices, educational and residential uses in mind. It will also incorporate opportunities to walk or bike to work and connect with rail and bus services. This is a key location for the whole Pioneer Valley to um, revitalize uh, our urban core. So the building is um, planned to be rehabilitated into a boutique hotel and mixed-use development, which basically means that the mixed-use will be the bottom floor all retail, and then there will be some office uses. Zoning should be adopted to focus on transportation-oriented development around commuter rail and transit stations or stops. The choices for housing must be expanded and diverse to allow parents to live near work or transit lines to allow them to spend more time with their growing families. Strategic collaborative investments can strengthen neighborhoods by preserving and rehabilitating existing housing. Urban areas must also be revitalized through attracting jobs, market rate housing, and mixed use development. Hartford is working to do just that through its Downtown North, Downtown West plan. The plan's vision is to harness the full potential of the area by creating an environment that will improve connections between Downtown Hartford, the North Hartford neighborhoods, and the Union Station Transit Hub. This will lead to the development of the district as a vibrant mixed-use community, exemplifying the rich natural and cultural heritage of the city. Complete streets plans and policies help residents save on transportation costs and keep them healthy by allowing them to safely bike and walk to where they need to go. We need to promote food security for all residents and reduce hunger. The Creating a Walkable New Britain project has its own model program to create a walkable city. The program utilizes streetscape improvements downtown with the goal of improving the quality of life in this historic downtown. Complete streets are streets that work well for everybody. They work well for a car, for a pedestrian, for a bicyclist. Um, they have a feel about them that if you are a pedestrian, it just feels right. If you do in a downtown area implement these kind of projects, um, they're business friendly, they help spur business, um, they help spur quality of life. A green knowledge corridor has clean, fishable, and swimmable waterways in part because of reduced stormwater and sewer pollution. It has reduced greenhouse gas emissions, resulting from increased energy conservation and green energy production alternatives. There's smarter growth and compact development patterns, all protecting natural resources and reducing auto travel and air pollution. There are increased land conservation efforts, protecting our farmlands and wildlife corridors, better access to healthy food, beautiful, safe parks, and recreational opportunities, particularly for urban residents. Urban residents face a particular challenge, as brownfields provide an impediment to development. Cleaning up these sites and making them part of the community again must be a priority. Pollution in our waterways is a concern as well. Pollution from combined sewer overflows and urban storm water runoff threaten our rivers and the wildlife that depend on them. After 20 years of work, the Connecticut River Cleanup Committee has cleaned up over 50% of the combined sewer overflows on the Connecticut River in Massachusetts and reduced CSO pollution by over 1 billion gallons per year at a cost of $356 million. Hartford similarly has approved two referenda to expend a total of $1.6 billion on this problem. 
this river can be the cornerstone of this region. It can drive economic vitality. It could be the Connecticut and Western Mass correlate to Boston Harbor. We're 50% of the way there. This is very costly for municipalities to separate their sewers so that these direct runoffs into the river no longer happen. Uh, there still remains millions, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of sewer separation work to do. A green knowledge corridor becomes green by pursuing multiple strategies to preserve and conserve resources while undoing contamination from the past. Green infrastructure and sustainable design must be institutionalized through policies and practices that make these standard operating procedures. Green streets and green roofs and rain gardens can reduce runoff and improve water quality. Cutting pollution from combined sewer overflows and stormwater will help clean up the Connecticut River and its tributaries. Greenhouse gas emissions must be reduced through municipal zoning strategies to encourage more compact development, clean energy strategies, and energy efficiency. And we must make plans to adapt to climate change that is already happening and protect critical infrastructure. We need coordinated regional efforts to protect key natural resources to ensure those resources remain. We're working regionally on a rail trail system. Uh, we're working regionally on reducing our carbon footprint and thinking about climate adaptation. We're working regionally on creating affordable housing. So a lot of activities are sort of both happening in Northampton and happening throughout the region. Green strategies are good for our economy too, as new jobs are created to support the greener, more sustainable development. Ensuring a green knowledge corridor ensures roots of both families and trees will grow deep. The knowledge corridor is strong, but it can be stronger. We can be competitive and connected with the world. We can be more vibrant and greener. This is a knowledge corridor that is sustainable, not only an environment that is sustainable, but also a workforce that is sustainable, active, and vital. It is a region that provides equitable opportunities for all. It's our knowledge corridor. It's up to everyone to work together to make it the best that it can be. Please join us.